Well, I want to give you a very warm welcome to this first night of our Easter meditations. This is the first meditation of Holy Week, where we will journey with Jesus as he makes his way to the cross on Good Friday, but that gloriously he will be raised from the dead on Easter Sunday. So it's my prayer that if you're a follower of Jesus, that you'll make this journey with us this week. But if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, like there were many people in the crowds in those days, it's our prayer that you will give Jesus a hearing this week, that you will listen to him, that you would follow him, and that sometime during this week, that you will allow him to come into your heart. Tonight, we're going to make that first step of the journey as Jesus has now entered the city of Jerusalem, the holy city, Jesus, as he clears the temple on this Monday evening, is going to reveal to us more of his glory, more of his holiness and more of who he is. Tonight in our meditation, there's going to be a reading. There's going to be a brief thought, a song and a prayer. I really hope that you'll engage with the Lord Jesus this evening. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another, because you did not recognise the time of God's coming to you. Then he entered the temple area and began driving out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, My house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. Yet they could not find any way to do it because all the people hung on his words. Just yesterday, Jesus has made his way to Jerusalem. People have flocked the streets with their palm branches and laid them down on the ground and waved them and shouted, Hosanna. They thought their king was coming uh, to rule and to reign on this earth. Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem. He looks over Jerusalem and he actually weeps over Jerusalem. He sees beyond the fabric, he sees beyond the houses, and he sees the people. He sees a problem. He sees a lack of peace. He sees the future punishment coming. And Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. On the Sunday, we see the heart of the King of Kings. He has care and compassion for the people of Jerusalem. And now today, on the Monday, he makes his way down into the very epicenter of the Jewish religious life into Jerusalem into the temple into his father's house where he went as a boy as he went as a man as well when Jesus comes it's Passover week the streets of Jerusalem are bunged some estimate that well, there's even around two million people in Jerusalem have come for this Passover feast and as they get to the temple the crowds just intensify there's no social distancing here. People are packed in. It's noisy. It's dusty. There's a sense of anticipation in Jerusalem. And as Jesus comes to his father's house, what does he find? It's not the way that it should be. He finds that the what should be a house of prayer has been turned, turned into a den of robbers. He finds in the out of courts, people exchanging money at extortionate rates. You see foreigners who were coming had to pay the temple tax in the local currency and people were exploiting this. Also, people were selling animals for sacrifices at crazy prices, profiteering out of the Passover. Jesus had seen that the house of prayer had been turned into the house of profit for man. It had been turned into self rather than God. I wonder this Easter week, if Jesus was to come into the outer courts of your life and my life, what would he find? Would he find people who are more keen on profit than on prayer? Who are more keen on self than on God? 
we also see Jerusalem's response to Jesus as, as Jesus comes in, as he turns the tables over, as he is distraught at what he sees, as he creates a whip of cords, and as he chases the money chasers out of his father's house. You could possibly ask him the question, why does he do this? What is the heart behind this? Well, this is Jesus' controlled anger. It's just anger. It's meekness. It is strength under control. Jesus knows exactly what he is doing. And so why does he do it? Well, he does it to cleanse the temple, to make way for the next few days where he's going to do a lot of teaching in the temple. And he's going to speak out words of truth and of life. But he also makes way for himself to come as a true temple. You see, Jesus would fulfill all that the Old Testament temple was to be. Jesus would fulfill the very presence of God with man. Jesus would fulfill the access for man to come to God. Jesus would be the perfect sacrifice for man's sin to God. And Jesus would be the mediator between man and and God. You see, Jesus is the perfect fulfillment of this Old Testament temple. And Jesus cleanses it to show that he is going to be the true temple. That in three days it will rise up again. So what is the reaction of Jerusalem to Jesus? Well, the chief priests, the religious leaders, and the teachers of the time are distraught. And they want to kill Jesus. They hate what Jesus is doing. Not only has Jesus turned over the tables, but Jesus has turned over the whole entire religious system. The corrupt religious system. Jesus has turned the tables on them and they want to kill him. And then on the other hand, you have the crowd who are hanging on every word of Jesus. They want to hear more. Jesus is teaching with authority. They've never heard this kind of teaching before. And they're hanging on every word. You see in this passage, Jesus defies opinion. Some want to kill Jesus. Some are hanging on every word. You see, Jesus always defies opinion, doesn't he? Even today, there are those who want nothing to do with Jesus, who want to kill Jesus. And there are those who hang on every word, who want to live for Jesus. I wonder today, where are you? Are you for Jesus or are you against Jesus? Do you want to kill Jesus? Are you disinterested? Or are you hanging on his every word? You see, there's no middle ground here. Can I encourage you today to hang on his every word, to read his every word, what he's revealed to us in the Bible? You see, this passage is all about the glory of Christ. It's our prayer that Christ would well up inside you that he would brim to overflow and he would just burst forth into this our day and generation where people need to hear the words of Christ they need to see the sacrifice of Christ and they need to turn in repentance and faith and give their lives to Christ let's pray dear Lord Jesus as the events of Easter week began to unfold. The exuberant hosannas give way to the great disturbance in your soul. No hesitation, but profound consternation. No surprises awaited you, just an overwhelming assignment which you helped plan before the world began. Within days, you would take the judgment we deserve to give us the grace we can never earn. At the end of the week, your bruised heel would crush the head of the ruler of this world and cast him down in defeat once and for all. At the end of the week, you would gladly pay the price for the salvation of God's immense covenant family. Children of grace, redeemed from every nation, tribe, people and language. Daughters and sons of mercy, as numerous as the stars in the sky, the sand of the beaches, and the dust of the earth. 
It was for this purpose you came from eternity into time and space. For this very reason you emptied yourself of your glory by taking the form of a servant man, the Lord's servant. To this end you became obedient, even obedient to death on the cross. Understandably so, Lord Jesus, your heart was overwhelmed. As the events of our week now unfold, grant us grace to slow our pace and quiet our hearts, that we might survey the wonders of your sacrifice and love for us. May our boasting in your cross go exponentially, demonstratively and joyfully. So very amen we pray in your holy and graceful name. i uh-huh.